Well, um, I've been watching my daughter for years show dogs in 4-H and as a young adult starting to get into the AKC and Aska rings with her Australian Shepherd and I've been kind of her assistant for all these years and we went to the Puyallup circuit and the Portland circuit this last year and I was her assistant and unfortunately I had to go into the ring and I was very unprepared at one show in Portland. So I told her that I didn't want to do that to her again. I wanted to be at least prepared enough to go into the ring to not embarrass her. So I said, I really need a handling thing, not drop-in handling classes. I need a seminar that's going to teach me handling skills. You know, so I said, keep your eyes open, you know, let me know what you see. And we were talking on the phone one day, and we do that a lot, and she was cruising the internet, and she goes, Mom, there's a seminar I want to go to that's up in your area. And we talked about the dates, and they were like, hey, wait, that, uh, that weekend will work for me. And what's it all about? And we were studying it and looking at it, and I went, you know, we can do handling. She goes, there's stuff on breeding. She goes, there's one on structure, all the things I've been looking for. And I went, well, you should go. And I thought, what the heck? I'll go with you <laughs> because we do all kinds of dog things together. And so I decided that we would do that. And so I did some watching of his YouTube videos. And so I was kind of aware of maybe what I was going to do. And I wanted just to get enough practice so I could be an assistant to her. Well, the first day I got here and I had not really been in the ring except that one bad time with my 22-month-old um, Australian Shepherd. And he was so headstrong. And Eric was like, you got to work with this dog. You can do this. And you don't want the muzzle to go up and down or side to side. Because if they do, that, that's their test to see yeah, if, if you're gonna, strong. Okay, so keep that muzzle straight. Marcus. <laughs> right. So you can see that you, this is where you're going to need to work in order to move forward. Right. So just get the dog back out and say head straight. And straight. He was head straight. head straight, all that head straight he was teaching me and I was like okay I can do this and it was amazing what transformed in the first day and I was like okay I can do this. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to show the dog not just be your assistant but be His in the color. ring at the same time. She's got a red, I got a blue Merle. We could we could have a lot of fun and so I'm thinking this is going through my head and it's like okay so I'm just absorbing all the information he was getting me and so today when we had our advanced lessons, my morning was just so stressful. I was fighting him worse than I think I was fighting him two days ago. And I'm like, this is just, okay. I said, and we watched our first rounds of video and he goes, you know, what are you getting? I go, it's a lot of head straight for me. I don't think I can take any more steps for a long time. I just need to keep practicing those skills. And I listened to everything he had to say. And so we did some practice rounds today and I kept improving. And in the end, I gained so much. And we had a test class at the end and I took first place because of all of the advances I had made and where we were. And it was just, it brought me to tears because the win wasn't so much as just that last class, seeing things start to click with my 22-month-old boy. It was just phenomenal. Well, for me, I was, as she said, looking around. I've been looking for, it's my first show dog. I really wanted to do well with him, and I've been kind of bitten by the bug. I did decently well when I took him to nationals this last year. He actually placed in his class, so I was proud of myself. I beat some pro handlers with dogs. It just it helped solidify that I really enjoyed showing, and I could do this, but we were just missing something. I, could, I couldn't see the issues I was having. I couldn't pinpoint them. I needed somebody else's opinion, and I've been looking around, and one of the other things I was really interested in was just besides the handling issues was the panogenics themselves because my boy sadly when I moved from Ohio to California last year he blew his hair at the summer just from the change in heat the change in elevation the change in latitude he was naked I mean to the point his legs were bald really really bad and sadly he did not let me know this for a long time but he got a very bad case of hookworms 
So I've, he's been hookworm free now since about February and it's been a very slow process of getting the bad hair out and getting the good hair back in. And he's still dull. He's not doing well in the California sun even though I'm trying to keep him inside. I just couldn't get that coat hydrated. And yesterday we had the Friendly Glow facility give him a, ba a panogenics bath and blowout and then Eric last night helped show us how to put in the texture crystals and I found my dog under all this lacking of hair. Like my dog is still there and he was gorgeous and I was crying yesterday because I found my dog again. He's there. I, I'm, I'm beyond excited by the fact that I still have this gorgeous dog and he looked better than he had even as hairless as he is. He looked gorgeous. He had color. He had texture. It was just amazing to just see it go foof and be there. So for me and the hardest part for me has been correcting issues and letting my dog, because I make him crab. I lean over him. I, I do all these things I didn't realize I was doing. And I finally am starting to work with him as a real true team, trusting him, letting him do it. And I finally, it took me a couple of rough goes today, but I finally on that last one, it just started clicking, keeping my hand down. And he was nailing his free stacks and his presenting different ways and I'm like okay I can try to do this I don't know if I'm quite doing it but here let's try this and let's do this stuff that will grab my attention and we watch the video I hit one where I move my arm and you just of everyone standing there all you see is me bump and I was like that's what I need in the ring so it's been absolutely priceless this experience I would do it I would do it again even if I did it in a couple of days and I'd still learn a whole new set of things and be able to perfect it but giving me the tools to actually do it, I'm beyond eternally grateful. But I'm looking forward to being back next year. I want to come back. I want to show Eric how much I put his stuff to use. Um, make him proud. Um, and then see where I need to go to the next level. You think you'll make him cry again? Uh, I would love to make him cry again. Uh, he made me cry. I mean, I was just, it's phenomenal. What I learned, how I feel, the confidence I've gained, the knowledge I gained, I had no clue. And it even applies to performance events. I didn't realize, I mean, he started saying some of this stuff about dominating and crowding and no wonder they do this stuff. And I'm like, guy, no wonder my obedience when they just, all of a sudden they're like sitting and you're like, why'd they do that? It's because I'm sitting there staring at them, not even realizing what I was doing. My headstrong girl I have, I, if I would have done this with her years ago, it would have taken me a lot of fighting her. But just those aspects of, I might have actually been able to do obedience and rally with her rather than her saying every time we got in the ring, I know you can't correct me, I'm not gonna work for you. So it's amazing how much even to other aspects of this dog world, it just, everything is like, it makes sense, common sense. It has been the best learning experience. It was fun. His, Eric's working with people is phenomenal. I mean, he makes everybody feel good. He's easy going. It was fun. It wasn't just work. It was fun. I learned. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I learned so much that I think even from a beginner like me who, okay, I haven't been in the show ring, but I feel like I have some confidence and things I can work on. I'm not quite ready, but I got homework to do, and I think I can do it. And I want to come back next year and at least know that I've been in the ring once or twice, <laughs> and I can show them. I can pick up some more tips. because And then I, there were other people here that have been handling. They've been showing, and well, like watching my daughter. She has been handling since she was a young girl you know, 4-H and then some juniors and, and then some AKC and ASCA events as an adult. But I know she learned a lot this I week. Lot. Me, I've been handling for a while, but was not confident in my handling skills. And it, I wanted to get better handling. And I also wanted my dog to have more confidence as well as myself have more confidence. Um, so that's why I came. Did you, have you shown her a couple of times? Or? I have, she has one point. Woo. One point, Woo. Yeah, she what, what, what was she doing in the ring that you weren't happy with? She was unsure of herself and um, seemed to be easily frightened and I was unsure of my skills. And she, and was, also, she was fighting with, uh, with me as far as um, trying to stack her 
she was very difficult to stack and moving and twitching and doing and blah, blah, blah. Movement was not a problem, but stacking was torture. So I really needed to, needed to get some help with that. And Joe, what about you? Well, I'd had uh, Virgil since September. Uh, he'd been to three shows. One was a puppy match, which he won group two at, which was the wow. most fun show I had. And as the, <laughs> as the shows went on, the worse I got <laughs> and the less fun I got. And I realized, you know, it was hard to find a trainer locally that seemed to be either available when I could do it or there was very little. And I went online to YouTube, good old YouTube, and I saw Eric's uh, workshop in Seattle. And then I saw the Australian one, and then I sent uh, the Seattle, a copy of the Seattle, a link to the Seattle one to Chris, and said, hey, look at this. This guy looks like he knows what he's talking about, and it's very interesting. And So it went from there, and Chris was enthusiastic and said, yeah, let's check let's into this. So we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a lot of money you spent. I mean, with flying and renting a car and a hotel um, and things like that. Um, was it worth it? Be honest. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Why? 100%. It's worth it for the confidence I feel in knowing what my goals are now and where I was doing things wrong. I haven't perfected anything, but I have, uh, I have a program. You got a nine and a half out of ten today. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, got, a, I got a ten. You got so. a ten. Yeah, so there I you shouldn't go. be sitting so That's close right. to you. That's right. You can go home now. Move away. <laughs> okay, so you the next morning you wake up, and then all of a sudden Eric's sitting in a room. Take us through that. <laughs> well, no, you walked in the door and gave us a hug. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that was, like, that was the, opening, you the opening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, so then we sat down to a seminar. That was two or three hours, I would mm -hmm. say. I thought uh, that background, was amazing. For really me, nice background so on dog behavior yeah. and how they're put together, and and then going into um, the rest of the syllabus. I mean, not the rest of it. Half the of classroom that, I things. Mm -hmm. Sort uh, of what you were going to introduce when we got to the practical. I believe. In, in some of the things that were in the classroom, were there some things that shocked you that? that you didn't even consider that would be a factor in a classroom of training dogs? Yes. Like what? Um, well, I mean, it sounds silly to even say it, but um, the respect and, and acknowledging mm. that with the dogs, it is really funny when you're trying to get them to do something and they're such bright animals. And I mean, this that has been demonstrated to me aptly in the class when Annie looked at me today like, what are you doing, lady? <laughs> um, I, they're so bright, they get it. I'm amazed three days later where she is from where we started. So, right. I, yeah, I, I love yeah, that. Yeah, the, the respect and the understanding that the connection, um, that at, it confirms my own deeply held beliefs that the animals need to have a connection in order for, for things happen. to really happen mm -hmm. and, it's, then, it's, and then the respect and the mutuality of the of the relationship is is very important it's um, not just like a militaristic type you know I'm gonna make you do this it's no. you've got to have that bond and happy you know the, their their health and happiness has to come first you know, so absolutely and I think they um, I think that's what I realized throughout this too is that because I was unsure before of what I was doing. And as you said, that goes right down the lead. And poor Annie was trying to figure out what the, what are we doing, what are we doing? And I see it now, she's comforted, she's okay. She's like, oh, all right. The signals and l having him learn how to read the signals where it, again, it doesn't, it's not a battle anymore, it's a dance. And there's communication there. So I really love that. And unfortunately, in the Bassett world, as we've established, a lot of what we see is the steering. You see that tight lead and you see the steering, even with the pros. So that's what we have both seen. I've seen it for many, many years. So it, it's just something bad you have to ignore and get away from it. Did you see a difference in the dogs as far as them being happy with this versus the other way? Absolutely. Tell me about that. 
uh, with Annie, as I've, I've said, I mean, because she is just a puppy and we're just starting her show career. Um, <clears throat> that was one of my primary goals, was to get her happy and relaxed and feel confident, because I think she is a really pretty little girl. Um, and that's what I've seen. That's what I've seen in three days. And, but I've been doing it, and Joe does it too. We practice at these little odd moments, you know, as you're getting in the elevator or if you're doing something, you're steering him. Right. And, and that's what it, I mean, it just takes that to click in and start using it every day. Going on a walk, going in the escalator. You know, like I just said, when I went out to the escalator. Yeah, that would be good, Chris, if you had <laughs> the elevator. <laughs> and I didn't. I went out to get the crates. I didn't realize that she had snuck out with me, not on a lead, just but right by my side. And I used my hand signals to say, come on, babe, come on, let's go back. Mm -hmm. She came right back, went in the room. Babe. Doesn't that feel good? Yes. Yeah. Amazing. I took, I took Amazing. Virgil out for a walk on the, I guess it was last night very tired after dinner still light out yeah, we but we needed line. to take him out and I took him out and let him off lead when we were at this empty lot and I walked him around I had him follow me and I used my hand signals and he totally enjoyed it I loved mm -hmm. it it was really fun yeah, that yeah. was a really neat. cool way to practice that. Yeah. Your dogs were wagging their tails, their heads were up, yep. they were so happy. Happy, happy. And, and so many people, when you talk about, you know, like like the only the only collar I will train on is a flat link collar. Absolutely. And a six foot leather lead. And so many people say, oh, you're putting them on a choker. You know? No. Tell, tell, talk to those people. Not at all. Not a choker at all. It releases. It's, it's probably the best thing I have ever seen. I'll never use anything else. That's well, it. The, it. Yeah, it's it's really, a, it makes a louder sound than the other kinds of slip leads. So it gives them a signal. That's it gives the them that point. signal more quickly. Mm -hmm. It's it's a way to get them to understand that there's a new move coming up and to and heads up to watch the signal, mm -hmm. really. And it's just and a flick so of finger. It's just a great tool. Yeah, and you're just using your finger as a little vibration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's loose, it's not tight on their neck, whereas opposed to the you know conventional style way of different collars are it's choking them. Pinching them and right. pulling their hair and everything you don't want to do. But some people say that's more hu more humane because it's not metal. No. No. Not <laughs> a, well, there's not also the small, the small uh, metal chains. The smaller gauge ones, but those pinch the hair. They pull right. The hair. They pinch the hair. Mm -hmm. They don't release as easy. They don't make any signals. They just slide. So mm -hmm. there's no communication, and yeah. and that's why the flat links work so so well. Both you know with the handhold and the gating and and, and just a else. pop too. Yeah, right. if you want them to go a different way, right. or mm -hmm. alert them. That that is what it does. But but when you get it, it is it so amazing. Yeah. yeah, when we both happened to get it on the last thing, that was... <laughs> okay, let's stop. <laughs> Eric wanted to finish on an up note, so... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stop now. <laughs> that how was, that how was did that good. feel when you guys, when it all just came together? Perfect. Perfect. Every little step, though, I mean, I mean, because it, it all leads up to that. It, it, every time, if you can get them, you know, to do the... When we were free stacking yesterday was actually when we started do, trying to do that, and they're both of them were sitting down, and we're like, okay, well, well, okay. You said, well, no, you're not going to get there in a day. Keep trying. Mm -hmm. Today they both free stacked. Yeah. And did it beautifully. I mean, I mean, Virgil is amazing. He looks amazing when he does that. And and just every little piece of it, and then when you realize it, it all goes together, and it just. It and is remember what I said. So I said, good. you know. Don't worry about the little things. No, I mean, no. it, it's going to happen. You don't have to have it perfect, you know. That hit home to not what's be negative, really... too. Yeah. To not be negative. Don't, yes. Because that was huge yesterday when you said, I forget what it was, and I responded and you said, no, you're being negative. Don't mm -hmm. be like that. You just, you know, recognize what a great accomplishment she just did. Right. Hmm, okay. You know, it's like That's... a lot of times when I have people that have breeds where they have to have a tail up. You know, they'll, the dog will go around yeah. beautifully, and the thing that they're focused on, oh, the, the tail, tail was down. Well, who cares? Yeah. It's going to come around. Yeah. You know, just, and you praise and support, and, you know, and, and it, it just, all of a sudden, it's like a light coming on, like day three today. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And, and that's what, the patience, you know, the other thing we teach in the class, 
You've got to have patience. And repetition. Do it three times. Three times, exactly. <laughs> and recognize really how much truly. the body language is so important oh. to the communication with the dog. So subtle. And yes. how, how uh, again, just constant uh, self-awareness of where your body is in space and how it's what it's communicating as you're working with the dog. Mm -hmm. Explain to me the difference you think this class would have been um, the second time around, you know, with you knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you think would be different, you know, coming into the second, doing this again in the future? If we'd done it over or, or a new level? Um, uh, well, you know, we'll pretend like you're going to sign up for another three day. Um, you, you really wouldn't want to do it over. You want, you Just would want to take the new level. Yeah. 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 Right, so yeah. how would you prepare for that? that additional class just go through and make sure I had, I still knew everything that I thought I knew or had gained from this class I would probably just go through it all again well I think it's the training that I would want to be doing at home every day to solidify what I already what I've now learned that would be great fun on the second time around do you think it'd make a difference if you bring a puppy or a mature dog that knows this system? Mm, well, I'd rather bring Virgil and trust that he'll be ready for it because that's what I. It wouldn't I be. Mean, I don't think it'd be fair to bring a puppy because they don't know the anything other, of what we have an learned. An untrained puppy. Yeah, right? I just don't think that. But would Virgil, be. like I said, if you keep working with Virgil with yeah. the system, and then so he comes the second time around then at that point now he's ready both of you as a team are ready for that be, next that'd level. be the whole thing you'd have to both be ready yeah. right right yeah. yeah you don't you're only going to get out of this program what you put into it yep you know i give you the tools but if you go home and you don't practice the head straight you don't practice using you know the entire system if yeah. you want it like well, I'll do this, but I'm not going to do that. You know, it's just not going to work. It's just the way it's designed is you have to use the whole system. You just said something hugely important that mm -hmm. I didn't mention, but that was with Annie, the head straight. You demonstrated that the first day and the method that you use. And while at first you feel like you've got too many fingers and right. thumbs and everything mm -hmm. isn't working, bing. Yeah. She stopped she got it. twisting. She, she got just it. drops in. And you're like, okay. That works. It's Good. Amazing. Yeah, I want you to talk about Eric as the trainer and the class that you, the three-day class that you took. You know, what what were some real big highlights that you love that you couldn't get anywhere else, and what are some things that you'd like to see different or some changes that would help people out in the future? I loved going through the system and learning. And the, the fact that you are so systematic in, um, for instance, you've got to win the, the coming in, you've got to win the down and back, you've got to win each segment. And the judges, that education of knowing that particular piece of information and, and keeping it, being mindful about it is, it was so super useful. But mm -hmm. if I had an issue and would say, okay, I don't understand, and then you would say, watch. <laughs> you, you seem to get so, what it is with the right, other, with the person that, right. what it's going to take. For, and for me, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. When you said, look at your watch, bing, okay, got it. Um, I, I, it's going to be hard for me to criticize you because even yesterday, well, I'd like to be critical. Mean. Yeah, I'd like to be. <laughs> um, yesterday, you were a little harsh, mm -hmm. but I think you have to be because, by God, we got to get it. We're here three days. Yeah. I don't have four days. Yeah. I don't have five days. I got three days. That's it. To give you your money's worth of knowledge to yeah. go back and be happy, successful, win, you know, make sure yeah. your dogs and you have great communication. So, you know, sometimes I, you know, it's just like with the dogs. I mean, if you're wishy-washy with them, oh. uh, then they're going to like, ah, oh, that's not that important. Yeah. And so sometimes with you, I, you know, with, with the people that I'm teaching, not you in general, 
but you know I know I have three days to teach you this information mm -hmm. and um, you know I don't bring out the whips and chains or anything but I'm gonna make sure that you're not gonna get away with no I mean yeah you, you, you got us good a few times which we needed but I still gave you hugs though, yes too. yes well it was huge for me which I got from the very beginning was mm -hmm. Yes, we're your clients, but you were so concerned about the dogs. There's potty breaks, there's play breaks, there's all these things. So they poop and they pee it. Okay, they're dogs. Right. Clean it up. Yeah. And that was huge. It wasn't like another class where you have to act like, oh, gosh, I hope they don't pee. Well, they're no. puppies on top of it, and, and it's going to happen. So I just, I thought the whole thing was, was great. Well, I've good. learned a trend, tremendous amount. <laughs> and that makes me you happy. Know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're a great yeah. teacher. Not just saying that oh. because we are on camera, but you are able. <laughs> we both said that, that from obvious, the get -go. That was obvious on the Huge. videos that we saw before we came. So 10 days ago, um, we went to a grooming clinic. Um, I wanted to learn how to groom my dog because I've always had handlers do it. And this dog especially has a really tough coat to groom. And I started talking to Eric and he's like, oh, I can make this dog so easy that even you can show it. And I'm like, yeah, right, prove it. And so he said, okay, give me 10 days. So we started out with the coat and I put his conditioner in every day for 10 days and I did nothing different. The dog uh, went outside for about eight to 10 hours a day. We played Frisbee, ball, everything. We did everything normal. I didn't do anything different other than put the conditioner in. After 10 days, um, I met up with Eric again, and we put some shampoo on, and we washed him, and his coat looked amazing. And he said, we're not done yet. And I'm like, what? This is great. And he's like, no, 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 no. We get to do it again. And I'm like, whatever. There's no way this dog could look better than this. Because right then, he looked like I could have taken him to a show. So we put more conditioner on, and then we did the shampoo again. And then, I mean, I could have walked in to show him. So much so that next month I'm going to actually do for the first time. And anybody that knows me that's watching this is going to be laughing because I'm going to go in the ring. I've made a big deal about the fact that I won't. But Panagenics is actually making it so that I can go in the ring. What impacted you the most? I mean, when, when you looked at that dog after we did the first bath, what went through your head that just really said, oh my, you know, I, I wouldn't have believed that there would have been a change. I like mean, the, the fact that it didn't take me two hours to dry him, that like we drove, we dried him in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and not only dried him, but like his hair wasn't foofing up. I mean, usually when I'm sending him out with my handlers and he's showing, I spend two hours every week drying him and I sit there frustrated because it takes a long time and his coat always flips up and I'm putting, you know, chamois on him, towels on him, whatever. And when I think I'm done, he shakes and it flips up like a duck. And I'm like, there's no way I can show this dog. I have to always use a handler. There's no way I'm going to know enough, get enough product or whatever. And I don't like that because I want him to be natural, but there's no way I could do it naturally. So the, after the first bath, we dry, we dried him out and he looked like he could go in a show. And I was like, I was so excited, like, that was all I needed. And then Eric's like, oh, no, you can do it again. If we do this again, it's going to be better. And I'm like, there's no way it could be better. And it was. And, I mean, his red is even redder and deeper. And, again, he's been outside every day. It's been, you know, sunny, so he's been out in the sun. I haven't done anything to keep his coat from bleaching out. It just gets darker and darker and better and better every time. What about the whites? Oh, my gosh. I mean, the white, I mean, you know, I've... <laughs> I have this concoction I was having to do. I was using, you know, milk of magnesia, and I was using, um, oh, what's that stuff called? Um, That's basically from the Westie people. They right, the that. Westies, and then also the, um, you know, the the, peroxide. the per hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. I was using hydrogen peroxide. I go every every night. I was having to spend twenty to thirty minutes just on his coat preparation of keeping his white because he would get red between his toes and. It was just every day was 30 minutes, and then on the weekend, it was a two-hour thing, and I dreaded it. I would, like, clean my house before I'd have to wash the dog because it just took so long. And I have this huge dryer that Eric calls, like, a, it's, you know, for an airplane. I mean, I could probably run two airplanes off of it because I have to dry and dry and dry and dry. And then I think I'm done, and he's wet again, and I'm doing it again. And this stuff is just 
amazing because my dog is white. I'm not going to need chalk. I don't need 17 different shampoos, one for his white, one for his dark, and then a regular shampoo, and then a conditioner, and then a spray. I mean, like, my tack box has gone from, like, 15,000 concoctions to four bottles, and that's just, I, I don't even know how to explain it. One of the things that I try to relate to people is that this will work on different breeds and because like what you were saying you know some breeds use a certain product for the white some people use a certain product for the blacks some people use a certain product for the reds in the coat some people use them for different textures oh i mean it just it didn't make him different it didn't make him a better dog it just made him the better version of him um and it's just you know and the other thing and i didn't bring it up before too is um he gets tears in his eyes which he's down i can't really reach him and so i was having to put apple cider vinegar in to keep that down he hates it and so i'd have to put extra food in i'd give him wet food to you know hide the the taste of it and eric's like oh you don't need to do this just don't put anything in him right now and i'm like okay so i didn't do apple cider vinegar for the last 10 10 days we put some of the panegetics on and it took it away. And I was like, seriously, I mean, the dog is going to be happier if nothing else. He doesn't have to eat that. And it's just so simple. And it's even nicer to know that if I get a different breed, I don't have to get a whole different set of shampoos. I can just use the same, the conditioner and then the shampoo. And, and I'm, I, I, I have not shown this dog. This is the best dog. I mean, I bred him. I love him. He's wonderful. And I've always wanted to go in the ring, but the grooming just terrified me because it's just too much. And um, I don't have that kind of time. I work full time and I know how much work my handlers put into his coat and it just terrified me. And just the little bit I did when he was home terrified me. So actually seeing how easy it was after using Eric's product and Eric showing me, you know, just simply how to blow him dry. Honestly, if I was at a regular show, I wouldn't have had to do anything else. After he blew him dry, I could have walked in the ring and my dog would have looked better than 95% of the dogs. And even better, after the judges put their hands on his coat, I would have been better than 100% because there was nothing in it. It was just the dog. And as a breeder, I like that because I want my dog not just to represent me in the ring to win, but I also want it to represent me as a breeder. And so I want people to be able to put their hands on my dogs and not say, oh, that dog's sculpted or, oh, that dog's put together with moose. This is my dog. And, you know, panogenics makes me go, here, touch him, do whatever you want. And it's his best version. Well, I wish that the camera was panned down to see my dog asleep on my foot right now. My dog does not have a lot of energy. He would be what you would call a low energy Aussie. So his tolerance on the grooming table is just minute. He doesn't want to be on the grooming table. So that's where a lot of our fights come from when I'm drying him and I'm like, Stinger, you have to keep standing up. So panogenics just shortens the time. And as it shortens the time, it makes it doable for him and for me because I don't even want to think of taking him to a show because before panogenics, and our two-hour battle royales just trying to get him dry, there's no way I could have shown him. I mean, both of us, I was drenched in sweat, and he was comatose asleep and grumpy because I kept him up that long. And now I actually think I could do it, which is kind of scary. But um, it, it's just mind-blowing to me, mind-blowing. I never would have believed it. I mean, Eric told me 10 days ago that my dog's coat would be so easy that I could, you know, go out and show up myself. I would have laughed at him. I mean, just laughed. And I'm sure most of my friends watching this are going to be laughing too until they actually see us in the ring and go, wow, they actually can do it. I mean, right now, he hasn't been touched since yesterday. I mean, this is, this is a day of without anything. I mean, I didn't do anything to him. And again, I think if we took a brush, I could go out and show them right now. I mean, so for me, again, as a one person doing it, I don't have assistance. I don't have anything. It's just me. I mean, the fact that I could do probably a whole circuit and my dogs stay clean, I mean, it's, I mean, it, I think it gives you an edge. I think it gives you that edge to go out and focus on your dog and, um, you know, give people, you know, give, all I want is for my dog to represent me and my breed. And, I've never felt like I could do it myself, and now I actually feel like I could. You know, what's really interesting about the texture crystals is you don't feel them, and that's what I really like. What I what I hate more than anything is when I go up to someone's dog to 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 feel its structure, and it's just yucky, and you're like, oh, it's you know, you got all this stuff, and all the texture crystals. This is you put them in, and then you activated them, and you just it just fluffed everything up, um, you know, and. Uh, 
it was just amazing because again, it doesn't change the dog's appearance. It accentuates the positives that the dog already has. And um, you just saw the whites get whiter and the red, I mean, it's already amazing, but the reds get redder and deeper and richer and everything just kind of stands there. And I'm not sitting there with chalks and they're trying to get the chalk on him and have the chalk not get on me and all that. And then the chalk get on the white, on his brown. And, you know, I mean, and I'm calling it brown because it's so red now that it's actually brown. That's pretty scary on my red dog. Um, you know, you just, you look at it and it's just, it's just so, it's so simple. You just wonder, where's the voodoo? I mean, you're like, seriously, how did you do that? It's like, I mean, is it magic? I mean, where are the, you know, are there mirrors? I mean, how did you make it so good? And, um, you know, I came home and my husband looked at my, at him and this was like three hours after we were done. And he was like, oh my God, he looks gorgeous. And he was running around the yard and I'm like, I can't believe it. I mean, this stuff just stays. And again, you know, it stays all day, so I'm not going to have to, you know, go and breed if breeds at nine in the morning and have to rebathe and all that for the afternoon. I mean, you just fluff them up and go again. And I mean, honestly, I think this is great for handlers, but this is an owner handler's dream. I mean, honestly, I don't know how to do this. Like I, when we went to the grooming seminar and Eric was like, what are you going to get out of it or what, how hard will you work for it? I'm like, uh, hello, I don't even know how to groom a dog. The joke has always been that I have all these grooming aprons and I've never put them on to actually work with them. So I am like, you know, talk about, you know, dog grooming for dummies. And Eric's technique made it that I could even, this dummy could do it. I'm like, okay, 90 degrees, it's simple. When in doubt, 90 degrees, you're not gonna screw it up. I mean, and that's what was so terrifying of me is like to take scissors to my dog. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in um, that our dogs, you know, these are Aussies, they're herding dogs. They're supposed to be working dogs and I don't wanna have a poodle. If I wanted a poodle, I'd get a poodle. And so Eric's techniques were easy for someone like me who's never picked up a pair of scissors. I just bought a pair of scissors. I've never had them. I've always said I have people to have scissors. So, you know, that's pretty good that Eric makes me feel confident enough that I can actually groom my dog. And if I can do it, I can tell you anybody can do it. I would say it's worth it. It, it is, if you charge more, it would still be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> And tell everybody I'm not giving you anything for free. No, you're not giving me anything for free. <laughs> Everything I'm saying is, is my own personal endorsement. Cool. I'm not being compensated in any way for anything I say. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about what was going through your mind when you booked this. What was going through your mind while you were driving up here? What was going through your mind when you walked into the door on day one? And what you experienced over the three days? First, I was... I was a little hesitant at first because I'm saying, well, is it worth the money to drive up there and, and go through this program? And I talked with the wife about it and we decided, you know what, it, go for it. it. It's just if you don't do it, you, you won't know. So we went up. The, I decided to come up, called you, set everything up, and two weeks later, I'm here. <laughs> and the first day I got here, I was a little nervous because... I'm, I'm not used to showing him. I have a handler that shows him for me. But I've, I want to learn how to do it. I want to be able to enjoy going into the ring and, and playing with him. So I figured the best way to do it is, is to just to go here and to learn. I've, I tried to learn from watching other handlers at shows, but you see so many different things that you, you really don't learn from watching them. But from coming here and, and, and going one-on-one -on -one with you and just being immersed in it, I've learned so much. I've even, I have to say, I've even learned more from being here than when I watched your videos. Because at first, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be cheap. I'm just going to watch his videos and not worry about going to it. But, the videos don't show everything. The videos don't show it. But yeah. then what they do show, you don't understand. Right what it's showing until you're here yeah. and you explain it and then you're like ah that's what that's for right. yeah. so no i have to say what i've learned here i i've learned so much and i'm and i'm so happy because like i said the first time i was here i was a little nervous i didn't know what to expect i i was scared but now i feel a little i feel a lot more confident of being able to take him into the ring and to be able to 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 do decently. I know he needs a lot more work though. He needs a lot more work. He I need... needs work? Okay, I need work. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to put the blame on him. Right. I've learned so much from Eric Solis and his 
grooming methods in his seminars and incorporating these products into expert advice um, has really stepped up my grooming. Uh, Eric has seminars. I wish, I wish that I would have gone to one of his seminars 30 years ago because I've been doing this wrong for so many years or and and so I would have learned so much more I wish I would have had a seminar to go to we have uh, Eric has the most fabulous seminar